In midday trade, the major U.S. stock averages are straddling the flat line. Earlier, we saw red across the board and we saw safe haven demand drive up the yen as well as treasury bonds. Joining me now is Matt Cheslock of Virtue Financial. Matt, great to have you here today. Well, thanks for having me today. Well, we may be in the final week of August, but we're actually getting something to trade on today. And overnight, we saw North Korea launch a missile over Japan and this did add to geopolitical tensions. But how do you see this playing out? Well, I would have expected the market to be down a lot more, uh, but we seem to be shrugging this off for some reason. I mean, this is a, a huge game of chicken that's gone on right now, and now we've taken it to another level. Uh, I'd like to see the response, but I would have expected the market to be down a little bit more, especially in light trading. Uh, you generally get bigger moves. So the fact that we're trending toward unchanged, as you mentioned, uh, leads me to believe um, you know people are a little conflicted about what's going on. And indeed, President Trump did say that all options are on the table, so we'll have to see how this plays out. But I do want to shift our focus on over to central bank monetary policy. Uh, last week, we got the Fed symposium with no fresh policy announcements from uh, either policy members from the ECB or from the Fed. But what do you expect to see, especially given that we have the jobs report before the Labor Day holiday weekend? Yeah, it's unusual to have that jobs report. And again, we talk about light trading, and you can see some volatility surrounding it. Um, and it won't be all hands on deck before Labor Day weekend, and this is a primarily slow week. But, you know, the Fed, I think, is going to push out most of their data to the to the end of the year. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to be doing anything now as we th maybe thought they would do one more rate increase in September, one more in December. I think September is definitely off the table, and December is probably going to be, uh, you know, 50-50 chance at best, uh, depending on the numbers. And Matt, last but not least, before I let you go, let's talk commodities. In today's session, we're seeing oil prices lower and we're seeing gold higher on safe haven demand as well as a weaker U.S. currency. But given what's happened in Texas in the aftermath of the hurricane, what do you expect to see for gasoline as well as oil futures? Well, gasoline, I know at the pump, is you know, the, the consumer is going to feel some some. Uh, price increases going over the next two or three weeks, and that's based on the refinery capacity that's being shut down. Uh, you know, oil seeing uh, take one on the chin. You know, we broke the 47 and a half level to the downside. 45 is probably your next support level, uh, and you're basically seeing that because uh, there's you know there's going to be uh, no real supply disruption in oil because we can't refine it. Uh, so that's why oil's taking it on the chin right now. Uh, so you know, we hope and pray for uh, you know everyone in Texas, and we hope this all works out and, and doesn't affect us. Um, you know. From, from a financial standpoint, but these people have a lot to worry about and, and we're praying for them, uh, especially after we saw Sandy and, and what how it affected us. But, you know, the commodities, you know, gold obviously is going to see a huge uptick about what's going on um, internationally. Uh, you know, that broke through 1300 the other day and we saw some short cover and taking it up to 1320. We saw a 1330 tick this morning. So, um, you know, but that's kind of backed off a little bit as the market's gone to unchanged. Uh, gold has made a very nice run here and now uses 1300 as support. Okay, Matt, as always, great to speak with you, and thank you so much for insight and analysis today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.